From my other videos, you probably already know that I don't particularly like work. Not because I think work is bad, but because I don't like the whole work and office environment. I don't like having multiple managers telling me three different things. I don't like bosses and team leaders and project managers and promotions and team meetings and all the rest. I don't like office gossip, and I don't like having to put on a face all the time just to keep people happy. None of this means I don't think work can't be rewarding, or think that it's a waste of time. Not at all. I think it's good to do things that benefit humanity. However, the environment that we have set up in most workplaces does not suit everybody, and certainly does not suit me. So I've been thinking over the last year or so, what's something that I can do that doesn't subject me to the daily grind, but still allows me to potentially help humanity, as well as earn an income to support myself and my family? The answer is, become an investor. In the past, I would have poo-pooed the idea. I thought investing was a form of gambling, and it can be. The difference between investing and gambling, depending on who you talk to, is only slight. Investing in one or two shares on a hunch is a gamble. Putting all your money into a new startup is a gamble. Investing $50,000 in a broad-based ETF or index fund for five or ten years is not a gamble. Investment takes time and patience. So as I'm getting older, I ask myself what's the point of putting myself through all the nonsense that occurs in the workplace, just to get a paycheck? There's only a couple of reasons that I can think of. To support myself and my family, and to get more capital to invest. If I was young again, I would have put all my efforts into saving money and investing in my 20s. When we're in our 20s, we seem to have a better tolerance for putting up with all the rubbish that goes on at work. So that's probably the best time to really put your head down and earn some money. Also, the fact that most people in their 20s don't have a family to look after makes it a lot easier to save money and invest. Less responsibility means more opportunity to earn money. It doesn't mean it's easy, in that young people tend to want to go out with their friends a lot and spend their hard-earned cash on booze and partying all night, so it takes a lot of diligence. But unfortunately, I'm not in my 20s, so I have to put up with having a part-time job in order to feed my family and fuel my investing habit. After doing it for a year, I now know that I want to become an investor full-time. That doesn't mean I want to work for a hedge fund or a bank. I want to be able to stay at home and invest as I see fit. I was toying with the idea recently of becoming a doctor. I was calculating how much it would cost and how much time I would have to put in. The minimum cost for me in Australia, with all the government support factored in, would be a touch over $10,000 a year for four years' study. That's a minimum of $40,000 I would have to spend. During that time, I wouldn't be earning any money, as it's a full-time program. I would barely have any time to spend with my family, and would probably be quite stressed throughout the entire process. But even after that four years, I'm not a doctor, I'm just an intern. To become a GP would take at least another six years, so if I put my head down, it would probably take about ten years of hard graft. During that time, I'll probably miss a lot of my children's formative years, and will have little time to help them with their homework or their personal issues at school. The more I think about it, the more I realise that becoming a doctor at my age would be a big mistake. I'd probably regret doing it. That's not to say that you shouldn't become a doctor if you want to. I'm sure it can be very rewarding, but it certainly wouldn't suit me. So instead of me spending $40,000 on becoming a doctor, why not use that money to invest in some high-quality index funds or ETFs? And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm working jobs that I can tolerate, that pay fairly well, where I don't have to deal with too many people at once. I save up the extra income until I have a spare $5,000 to invest, and then I buy a high-quality ETF or index fund. The process is simple, and I think given enough time, it will work. I want to be an investor as it suits my lifestyle. I can choose to invest in companies that are ethically conscious. Nowadays, we don't have to invest in tobacco or alcohol or gambling to make money. For example, Vanguard Australia have recently released an ETF titled Vanguard Ethically Conscious International Shares Index ETF. VESG. As described on their website, the ETF provides exposure to many of the world's largest companies listed in major developed countries. It offers low-cost access to a broadly diversified range of securities that excludes companies with significant business activities involving fossil fuels, alcohol, tobacco, gambling, military weapons and civilian firearms, nuclear power and adult entertainment. To me, that suits all my needs. 
As an Australian, I get tax breaks for investing in Australia, so I invest some of my money in a low-cost Australian ETF such as VAS. And then the rest of my money I plan to put into the ethically conscious VESG. I also have other money invested in peer-to-peer -peer lending as it pays consistently, but I'm slowly withdrawing that over the next couple of years and investing it elsewhere. I've also got some of my money tied up in Vanguard retail index funds, but I will eventually sell them as they have slightly higher ongoing costs than Vanguard ETFs. Anyway, if you've come here looking for how to become an investor, I would recommend starting early. Although I didn't start till I was in my late 30s, if you're in your early 20s, that would be the best time to start. The longer you are in the market, the more money you will ultimately make. Invest in index funds. Invest in broad-based ETFs. Don't just let your money sit in a bank account earning 1 or 2%. That's only benefiting the banks. Of course, you should always keep some money in the bank as a rainy day fund. Job security is a big issue nowadays, so don't bank on you always having an income. If you're patient, if you're diligent, if you don't waste your money going out to clubs and drinking booze, if you can handle the normal volatility of the markets and don't let your emotions get in the way, then you'll probably make a good investor. As the successful American investor Warren Buffett once said, the stock market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient. If you're tired of the daily grind and want to get into something where you can make all the decisions, why not give investing a go today? If you have any questions about my own personal investment choices, please leave them for me in the comments section below. Cheers.